I received a video message from an old friend of mine, Casper, where he showed off finding this enormous antler. En af de gode med en ret stor fin uh, endesats her, og den har stort set ingen skade overhovedet. Uh, det er sådan, jeg kan se på bunden af den, der var en lille smule blod på den, så jeg tror ikke, den har lagt særlig længe. Så jeg har været heldig at finde den inden reven, eller sådan en som dig kommer forbi. Det var bare det. Hey! A little later, he found an even bigger one. I showed it to Paul, and we agreed that we could do just as well, or even better. I had to reply to Casper's message. Men uh, jeg synes næsten, jeg skylder at vise dig lige, hvad, hvad jeg har fundet. Så... Skød, mand. <laughs> Paul did find an old small one, but it was far from perfect. Ah, there he goes. After walking more than eight kilometers and with about two kilometers left to the car, I found out I lost a pair of binoculars I, I inherited from my late father. But at that point, I was too tired to go back searching for it. Paul cut the tip off his left index finger when he was trying to make a pot hanger. He felt bad when he came back home and went to the emergency room. He's fine again. I had a pretty good idea in what area I lost the binoculars, so uh, Moosen and me went out searching the next day. When Moosen was younger and we were out walking, I threw a light or keys or something um, a few meters from our path when she wasn't looking. And uh, a little later I would tell her to go back search for it. And uh, that might have been the best thing I've ever taught her. A few years ago she found my, um, my pocket knife, uh, the one I use in most of my videos. Shortly after, it was given to me by another one of my best friends, Klaus. Uh, she has also found a saw, a water bottle and some other stuff I lost throughout the years. But I haven't had her searching for anything since she, she found a knife, so I had to keep my expectations low. Where should we go? At one point when we were walking, she seemed more interested in smelling animal tracks and droppings, and I had to tell her to go back on track. I was beginning to get a bit annoyed, but I knew I was the only one to blame. Uh, after a short break, we headed back. Then. Mosen found it. Det var godt, Mosen. Var en dygtig Mosen. Var en dygtig Mosen. I was so proud. I, I just wanted to cuddle her, but she wasn't having any of that. Det kan man godt lide ham, far. Var en dygtig Mosen. Sikke en fin Mosen. Dygtig Mosen. After walking a bit further, I found out that I had been wrong when I forced her to go Uh, back to what I thought was the right path. We searched for antlers the rest of the way back to the car, but we didn't find any. I came home with what I started out with the day before, but I couldn't be more happy. When I arrive to the tent, the first thing I do is putting the food in the cooling box along with a couple of frozen water bottles. I turn on the stove.
and I pour myself a gin and tonic or a beer. When the temperature is about freezing point outside, it takes about 30 minutes to get between 25 to 30 degrees Celsius in here. The heat and the alcohol makes me a bit warm and I often find myself taking a power nap. I realize it must be odd for most people to see a red sausage. It was invented in Vienna in the middle of the 18th century to give them a nicer look. The red color comes from some Latin insects and seeds from a bush. The Germans and Danes thought it was an amazing idea, so they did the same. The Austrians and uh, Germans have since stopped using the red color and now it's only made in Denmark. We call them Wiener Pölzer, Vienna sausages. Skal du den have her? Er det ikke godt? Skal jeg kåre den her? Skal jeg kåre den her? Skal jeg den her? Her må This winter have been different shapes of grey, with no frost and snow to lighten things up. And the temperature has been more or less constant between uh, 3 to 8 degrees Celsius. Most of the pot here where my tent is, is a swamp that keeps the water from flowing from the high hills in the forest behind the tent. And when I say high, that uh, is after Danish standard, because the highest point in Denmark is 172.5 meters above sea level. February was the second wettest ever measured since it was systematized in the 1850s. At the same time, we had two storms. But the last day of the month, it stopped raining and the sun came back. It affects one smooth when not seeing the sun for weeks, but uh, when it comes back you feel euphoric. Paul Moosen and me decided to get the best of it. It can too soon become February again. I'm 
sammen med. Skal vi lige? Okay. Oh, mange. Tak. Musen began to limp at the end of the trip. There was something wrong with her right forepaw. I laid on the floor with a head torch and a magnifying glass, looking closely when we got back home, but I couldn't see anything. I suspect it was a thorn from a rose hip. It took almost two weeks before she wasn't affected by it anymore. On my way home one evening, I saw what we call black sun in Denmark. It happens when a swarm of stark, also called a mammation, in the spring when they arrive or in fall before they are migrating, gathers before the night to, to find a, a place to sleep, and uh, they make these amazing formations. If, um, if a predator bird enters the flock, they will attack it with droppings and vomit uh, to make its feathers sticky, so it will be incompetent. This is in the middle of Jutland, in, in the marshes in South Jutland, there can be up to a million in one flock. One of the neighbors to the fish farm has a small group of trees, where some of them was windblown from one of the storms in February. They wanted a forest machine to remove them and thin out between the rest of them. I told them that I would be happy to do that as I only have what I took from the shelter to build with. Luckily they gave me permission. It felt amazing to go nuts again with my felling axe. I'm only used to debranching dead trees as I don't like killing them. I've always had some weird spiritual connection with trees. Trees are lying like a game of Mikado and I chop in all kinds of angles and positions. They are much easier to cut uh, than the dead hardened ones that I am um, used to, so it went very smooth until I cut through a branch and the handle hit the lock with too much power. Right now, at the end of March, the daylight has expanded with six hours since the 21st of December. Sunrise at 7 and sunset at 20 o'clock. March turned out to be the sunniest ever, from 200 to 230 hours. At the same time, it became the driest. It was a very nice month weather-wise, but it's kind of scary how the records have been broken almost every year. <laughs> 